Well, good morning, Rye Hill. It's great to see everyone here today, and we're excited to be here with you. Uh, as Mike was giving my introduction, I was thinking, man, I sound pretty darn good just off the of paper. Uh, but be praised to God. It's not about me at all. It's all about Him, and everything I've done is for God's glory. And today I want to take us to the Gospel of John. So if you have your Bible, if you will, turn with me there. The Gospel of John, chapter 8. We're going to be taking a look at verses 31 and 32. See, as I look back on my life, giving you a little bit of my background and and testimony, I was born down in Lawton uh, back in the 80s. And as I was born there and, and raised on that farm, uh, my, my journey in the church began before I was even born. Being a part of First Baptist Church in Davidson uh, while I was still in my mother's womb. And there I was, you know, went to the nursery and I remember crawling under the pews there for several years before my family uh, moved to Clinton where I was raised. Now, being in church all my life did not make me a believer. I was not saved at an early age, really. I was saved when I was nine. But I can tell you this that being in church all those years, uh, you could have looked at me and said, well, this boy is not going to be a preacher. He's going to be probably in jail before he's a preacher. I was not a very good young man, at least towards my parents. I was that child that went to school. They would have the parent-teacher conferences, and they would go, and I would get great, great reports, great reviews. And they would ask the teacher, are you really talking about my child? Because this is not who he is at home. But you see, God was working in my life still. My attitude towards my parents really, really was not good at all. And I went to church. I was hearing the scriptures. And my parents continued every day to pray. And you see, there was at one point where I was in trouble. Once again, it's kind of a daily occurrence for me to be running from my parents. Because, uh, you know, they, they, they grew up, and I, I was spanked growing up. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, but I was running from them again because I knew what was coming for my disobedience. And one time I remember sitting down on the stairs in our house thinking to myself, I'm not going to live very long. Because what was happening was my childlike mentality was thinking of the verse of the commandment from God to obey your mom and dad so that you may live a long and prosperous life. I was taking it very literally. But you know, as I think back to that time, I was not yet a believer but I was believing God's word. I was believing in that truth that was, had been instilled into me from the day I was born. God was at work in my life. And several months later, my family drug me to a, a week-long church revival. You know, back in the day when they still had those. I remember going to this revival and just you know, just telling my parents, I just don't want to go there. I don't want to go. It's boring. The preacher will never be quiet. It just keeps on going and going and going. Lord has a sense of humor, doesn't he? And there's only so many hand shadow puppets you can make on the ground, you know, trying to get through those days. But then the Tuesday night after that revival, we went home. You know, and the Lord had been working in my life. I felt the Lord calling to me. I felt the Lord knocking on the door of my heart. And I remember going to my parents and saying, tomorrow night, are are we going back to that revival? They're saying, yes. Like, good, because I want to go back. And and then they asked me, are you feeling okay? I was like, yes, I'm feeling fine. Mom, Dad, I want to give my life to Jesus. They said, well, now, I was also extremely shy, so shy I wouldn't even talk to my grandparents. And they told me, well, let, Cody, let's, let's get a meeting with the pastor and have him lead you through some stuff, have him talk to you to make sure this is really what you're wanting to do. And I told them, I didn't need to talk to the pastor. I needed Jesus. And that's all it took. And the next night, we went there, and they sat in the very far back of that big church. I guess they were testing me, being shy and everything. They sat as far back as they could. And I tell you what, the first note of Just As I Am began, 
And I jumped out of that aisle, and I started walking down. It was tunnel vision to the front, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior that night, and I have not been the same since. The Lord has continued to work in my life, and my parents can vouch for that. The very next morning, they were wondering, who is this kid? Because my attitude towards them completely changed. It was life-altering. But friends, that would not have ever have happened unless it was for my parents teaching me the Word of God, it was, wasn't for the Sunday school teachers teaching, the pastor preaching, me being in church. I heard the truth, and the truth set me free. Whether I wanted to hear it or not, I was hearing it. Those seeds were being planted. But let me tell you this, Sunday school teachers, if you're in here, especially children's Sunday school teachers, if you haven't had a conversion lately or you just feel like no one's listening, they're listening. God's word is being planted in their hearts. And when the time is right, God will go a knocking. It is not us that brings them to Christ. It is Jesus that draws us to himself. Amen? Amen. So after that night, I was different. I was changed. Because the word of God had been spoken into my life. And today, I want us to take a look at two verses out of the Gospel of John, chapter 8. And let's read, this, read them now in verses 31 and 32. It says this, So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Church, as we look at this passage here, the first point I want to make this morning is simply this, that following God's word is a trait of a believer. It's a trait of a believer. It is not an option of a believer. You see, as Jesus was speaking this, he had been telling uh, the Jews here that he had shared with them that he was the light of the world, and whoever would follow him would not walk in darkness, but would have the light of life in their life. And the Jews who had believed in him, he was speaking this passage to them. He was saying to them, if you continue in my word... If you continue in my teachings, then you are truly disciples of mine. Friends, he was talking to Jews who had been richly in depth in the Pentateuch. They knew it inside and out. They knew the tradition. And he knew that they were going to have a difficult time letting go of tradition and doing things the way they had always been done rather than following him and his truth and his word. And so he was telling them, if you're really my followers, if you truly believe in me, you will follow my instruction. You will hold to my commandments. You will live by my word. So simply, a believer will live by the word of God. And as I said, it's not an option. But what I'm afraid of today, church, is in our churches today and in believers' lives, it's not that a believer is going to say, well, I don't really believe in following God's word. It's more that believers will take the Bible and say, well, I'm only going to follow what I like in this. What's in the Bible is not optional. You either receive it all or you don't receive it at all. It is all the inerrant word of God. God breathed. In our world today, we are just so cram-packed full of options, aren't we? Full of options. But the Word of God is not optional. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, it says, Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all His commandments which I commanded you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you, if you obey the Lord your God. Are we obeying him today? You know, options can, can kind of mess you up at times. I remember when we were pregnant with our firstborn, he hadn't been born yet. That's Ephraim, he's 10. Uh, we, we went to a huge store that's called, or was called, Babies Are Us. I remember this store. And talk about an overwhelming feat for a dad or, or a new dad to walk in there. 
and just be so overwhelmed by everything. Like, well, we, we need to get some baby bottles. Okay, let's go to the baby bottle aisle. It wasn't an aisle. It was an entire wall. <laughs> Floor to ceiling, side to side, wall, every different shape, color, size, any type of baby ball you can imagine, they had it there. There's like 500 different styles to pick from. All I wanted was a baby bottle. That's it. And then we went to the stroller aisle. We might as well have been on a new car lot. We walked there and walked down. There was cars on each side. I'm surprised the car salesman didn't come out and try to sell us on one. You had options on those. Do you want cup holders on the front or on the back? Do you want athletic tires just in case you want to go for that 5K run with your child in tow? That would be a no-go for me. But <laughs> moving on. But there's so many different options in our world today that some may get confused that when we look at the Scriptures, that we may think, well, that applies to me. That really doesn't. It seems optional. Friends, nothing in this Bible is optional. Nothing. We must follow it and be blessed by God. To love others is not an option for a believer. To forgive others is not an option. To share the gospel is not an option. To tithe is not an option. These are commands of God to his children so that they may live a long and prosperous life. Following God's word is a trait of a believer. And John writes in 14, 15, says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Church, do you love the Lord today? And are you following his commandments? Are you holding true to these truths? No matter what the world says, no matter where the world's turning, we must stand fast in the word. But to do that, we must also know the truth. You must know the truth. You know, whenever I was first saved, I didn't know much of the Word. I remember the Sunday school lessons. I remember some scriptures. But I wouldn't say I was, you know, schooled in theological ideas at that point. As a nine-year-old, I needed to be taught. I needed to be brought up in the Word. And the way we teach the Word is called discipleship. Through discipleship, raising other people up. We were never called to go and, and reach people for the Lord and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and just let them be. You know, we, we think of the Great Commission, that might be where our minds go. We might think, go therefore to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always. There's some significant pieces missing in what I just said there from that verse. Listen to the verse. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Teaching them. So, friends, there is much more to do after we lead one to Christ. We need to disciple them. First of all, we need to share the word with them. That's evangelism. That's a part of discipleship. We need to evangelize, share the gospel with them. You know how many believers I've talked to that tell me they are scared to death to share the gospel with somebody? That might be you in here, right? Let, let's not be afraid to say this and admit to it, because I was that kid too. After I was saved, I was scared to death. I was scared to death to get up in front of people and talk. I wouldn't even talk to my grandparents. Why would I and go and share the gospel with somebody? But a, a scripture comes to mind, 2 Timothy 1, 7, where the Lord tells us that, but God did not give us a spirit of timidity or a fear, but rather of power, love, and sound mind. The Spirit of God wants to share the gospel through you. And when we're scared, that's not the Holy Spirit being afraid, that's our flesh being afraid. That's when we need to trust more in Christ now allow him to speak in and through us each and every day. So we need to evangelize. Just as that evangelist shared the spoken word of God with, with us at that revival I went to when I was nine, and I was saved, so too we need to share the gospel. 
we need to show the word as well. Show them how to study, how to pray, how to grow in Christ. This goes beyond just a, a, a class once a week. Because we all know that a relationship with Christ is a daily walk with him. It's a daily relationship. And each and every morning we wake up, we need to grow in him. We need to pick up our cross and carry it daily. And we need to remember that it's not I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. So we need to make sure to encourage, encourage others. Lift each other up, not only in prayer, but also in spirit. Getting connected with new believers. Being sure we're teaching them where to study, how to study, how to pray. Making sure that they're not doing it all by themselves. We're not called to do it on our own. I've seen kids that were saved and no one took them under their wing and what happened? They just kind of fell by the wayside. Friends, it should not be that way. We need to do a better job of taking care of our own. It's fine to go out and, and, and evangelize and, and bring them to Christ and, and baptize them. But what are we doing after that? Are we helping them to grow? Are we getting them connected? Are we getting them plugged in? Matthew 28, 19 tells us it's teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Are we teaching that still? Teaching them all that I've commanded you. We're also called to, to teach the word, to break down the word so others can understand it. Now, there are people called in the church to teach. And I'm, I'm thankful for all that God has called to teach the Word. Those in the church that are equipped to do so, that, you know, Sunday school teachers or teachers on Wednesday night. I remember when the Lord called me, this, this shy little boy that was saved at the age of nine. When I was 17, I went to a little place called Falls Creek. Are you all familiar with that here in Arkansas? Yeah. So I went to Falls Creek Youth Camp as a youth. I just was planning on going and having a good time. I was saved. I knew the word. So I was going to have a good time hanging out with my friend. But that Monday night, right off the bat, that night, God said, you know what, Cody? I want you to be a minister. I want you to be a pastor. I want you to be a preacher. I want you to share my word. I just kind of, <laughs> yeah. Do you know who you're talking to, Lord? Remember Moses? Yeah, that's kind of me too. Um, I, I, I can't do that. And so I said no. Tuesday night, came knocking in. Cody, I want you to do this for me. Lord, I can't talk. I can't talk to my grandparents, nevertheless get in front of people and do a sermon. So I said no. Wednesday, Thursday, same story. Then we get to Friday night. Last night there, and he, he just hit me hard. I said, okay, Lord, if you want me to do this, because you've worn me down so much this week, if you want me to be a minister, if you want me to be a pastor, you're going to have to show off in my life because I can't speak. I don't have the words. You've got to give me the words to speak, God. Do you hear me? You've got to give it to me. You know what he said? Good. That's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly where I want you to be, Cody. Humbled for me knowing it's not about you it's just about his word and so I accepted the call to ministry that night and then the next year went on my first mission trip to Malawi Africa I'd never been in a plane before and so I decided to take a 24-hour flight you know it's just, God has a sense of humor that way Lord I hope I like this because I'm going to be on it a long time And then a few months after that, I gave my first sermon. Tag team with, with two other guys that were my age, that were still that were called to the ministry at the same time. Made it through the five-minute long sermon I had without passing out. And I praise God for that. But I'll never forget being a nervous wreck. We, we took the three, uh, the three temptations of Jesus, and we each took one. And mine, I was, ended up being the last one so I had to sit there through the other two just sweating up a storm down there, just nervous wreck. 
And then my time came. It's almost like I could hear the, the, the bells ringing for me. Like, oh, here we go. Here, here it is. I just remember, Lord, raise me up on wings as an eagle. I need your help. You know I can't do this. I remember walking up the stairs on that stage and turning around and looking out and a peace just coming over me. I'm saying, okay, Cody, let him have it. You know what? I've been letting him have it ever since. But friends, every day I get up, every time I teach, every time I preach, it's a hallelujah moment. It's a glory to God moment because he is showing off each and every time. You know, I know people before my calling, those that knew me know that because they knew who I was beforehand. They knew how shy I was. They knew I wasn't one to get up in front of the class and, and talk and speak and to take charge and to lead. Oh, how God can use you. How God can change your life. And how mighty is his word that will set you free when you listen and you obey it. Amen? Amen. Friends, we need to teach. But we also need to serve. We need to do missions. We need to go out and do the Great Commission and reach people with the gospel because when one is a disciple, when one is raised up in the, in the word of God, they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. It will set them free. Set free from what? Set free from the chains of sin. Set free from the lies of the enemy, the lies of this world. You will be set free. You know, people come up and ask me, well, what do you, what do you think about this issue or what do you think about that issue? And I simply just tell people, we live in a very, very confused world. A very confused world. Because the truth of God is the truth. It's here, black and white. There shouldn't be any confusion. But the enemy is a liar. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for souls to devour. He was once a liar and always will be a liar. And so the world is falling into these lies. And as we look at this passage here in, in John 8, and as it continues on, people ask Jesus, well, we've never been slaves. What, what do we need to be set free from? And he tells them, you have been, you have been slaves of sin. You've been chained up. And in verse 36, so if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The church today, do you know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior? Has He changed your heart today? And if so, are you following God's Word? Again, it's not an option. It's a trait of a believer. And to follow that, do you know the truth? Are you plugged in to learn more about the truth? Because you may be sitting out here today, maybe kind of on the fringe. The Lord's spoken to you. You know he is, but you've just kind of been saying no. You're just kind of hanging out there. You don't really want to go further. You're comfortable where you're at. But today is the day to take that next step, to move forward, to grow deeper, to go further in your relationship with the Lord. It's time to, to let go of the traditions that are binding us up. Because if a tradition is in direct uh, issue with the Scriptures, what needs to trump? The Word of God. Always the Word of God. Friends, if you know the Word of God, you have been set free. Are you living that way? Are you living as the light of life? As Jesus said, you will have the light of life. Rye Hill, you are the lighthouse of Fort Smith. And you're shining bright. The only way a lighthouse will work is if the light gets out and into the community to show them the way. Are you living up to that? Are you going to continue to be the light in this dark world? Paul writes in Romans 6.18, And having been freed from sin, 
you became slaves of righteousness? Are you living day in and day out, serving God? Day in and day out, waking up, telling God it's not about you, it's all about Him to help you to continue to focus on Him and in His truth. Friends, the Lord saved my soul and called me to ministry. And I, I grew and was able to do those things through discipleship, being taught by others who had said yes to evangelism, that had said yes to teaching and to showing me how to study and how to live by the Word of God and how to, how to teach others. Today, I know the truth because of that thing called discipleship. Church, my challenge today is for us to continue to disciple, to look around and make sure no one's being left behind, but that we're spurring each and everybody on to deeper, deeper thought of the Lord, knowing Him on a much deeper level. Do you know the truth today? Have you been set free? Church, today is the day of salvation if you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Church, if you will, bow your heads with me. Father God, we just thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for your word and your truth. Lord, I thank you for seeing me, a little, a little Western Oklahoma boy that was so shy, but knowing that you loved me, that you sent your one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sin. Lord, I thank you for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for calling me to the ministry as you did in such a faithful way. Lord, I pray for those in this congregation today, God, that your word would not return void. Lord, that others would hear your message. That if you're truly, if we're truly your disciples, we're going to follow you. We're going to follow your word. Lord, if there's one here today that says they're a believer, but God, they've, they've strayed. They haven't been following your word of God, Father. I pray that you'll bring them back today. Father, get them plugged in. May they come back and repent and turn to you. Lord, for the one that doesn't know you yet, Father, knock on the door of their heart today. Draw them to yourself. And may you set them free from their sin today. Father, I thank you for your word and your truth. May you use this time of invitation for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Church, if you would please stand. The invitation is now open. Won't you respond to the Lord's message this day? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rahel Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.